Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Why did he find favor? Because he listened to him and because he trusted him. So let's ask yourself the question. Do you listen to him? Do you trust him? Then if that's true in your life, then God, listen, God will show you favor in every single area of your life. If in each area of your life you listen to him and you trust him. Four decades ago, we started In Touch Ministries to lead people worldwide into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ. Throughout the years, we've seen God's greatness, His love and His blessings in such awesome ways that we just want everyone to know Him. So let's open God's Word and seek Him together. Next on In Touch, Walking in the Favor of God, Part 2. Well, the Bible says that Noah found favor in the eyes of God. And when I think about that, I think about uh, what the Bible says in this Gen Genesis chapter 6, if you want to turn there for a moment. And um, the reason he found favor with the Lord, first of all, is because he listened to God. That's what we talked about last week. He listened to God. He found favor in the eyes of the Lord. He not only listened to him, but the Scripture says, he also trusted in him. And that's the part that I want us to deal with this morning in this passage. He listened to God, and then he trusted him. And so when you think about yourself, ask yourself this question. Do you know how to listen to God? And would you say that um, after you listen to him, that you are willing and ready to not only listen to him, but you're willing to trust him. Think about this. You can pray all you want to pray. If you don't trust God, you're wasting your time. Because faith is absolutely essential. It was absolutely essential to get you saved. It's absolutely essential to live the Christian life. And a lot of people say, well, I'm saved. Well, do you ever listen to God? Well, I, not, well not really, I, but I know I'm saved. Well, first of all, if you are saved, you had to listen to God because he's the one who told you you needed to be saved. And once you listen to him, he's going to tell you what to do. So you trusted Christ as your Savior. But many people don't listen to God. And if you don't listen to him, how can you know whether you're doing the right thing or not? And then do you trust him when you ask him something? When you ask God for something, do you close your prayer with a sense of expectation of God answering your request? Or do you do like most people do, and that is they pray and talk to God about this, that, and the other, and say, amen, Jesus' name, amen, get up and walk away. First of all, we must listen to him, and secondly, we must trust him. And that's what this passage is all about and this sermon is all about, so we talked about what, what is the favor of God. The favor of God is his acceptance of us, his approval of us, his support of us, his provision for us, his divine energy he provides for us, and his joy. So with that in mind, I want you to turn to Proverbs chapter 3 because this is an awesome passage of Scripture, and um, it's really the way Noah lived in these days when he heard the Lord. So look in Proverbs chapter 3, beginning in verse 5. The Scripture says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. Trust Him. In all your ways, acknowledge Him. Trust Him. And He will make your path straight. Trust Him. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. So, our first responsibility is to listen to him. So I would ask you this question. Do you take time to listen to God and not just kneel or whatever you do and start doing the talking? And secondly, once you pray, do you begin to think about what you've prayed about and begin to think, well, uh, this is what I've asked God for. Do you trust him? Do you have a sense of expectation 
when you get up off your knees, that's not a way for me to say it. That's happened to be the way I pray. When you finish, do you expect him to do something about what you said? And I think most people don't pray that way. They talk to God and tell him what they want him to do and so what they need him to do, and then say, in Jesus' name, amen. Now, wait a minute. If I'm going to ask him that, am I going to trust him? Do I stand up, sit up, walk away, say, yes, God, I've asked you this. I'm expecting, I'm trusting you to answer my petition. And if you do not end your prayer with a sense of trust, you just mumbling words. So if you'll think about this, your entire relationship is built on that. How did you get saved? You got saved by listening to the Word of God, and you got saved by trusting that what God said He would do. Amen? That's, that's, that's pretty weak. Amen? Amen. You, you, you trusted Him to save you, and all you did was to ask Him verbally, repent of your sins, confess your sin, and, and you asked Him that, and then you got up and walked away, and you trusted God that He answered your prayer. So the reason Noah found favor in the eyes of God is, first of all, he listened to God, what God said to him. And secondly, he trusted him. And we, we know the story. So I want you to turn back to this sixth chapter for a moment because he's a perfect example of the absolutely three essentials if God's going to work in our life and we're going to accomplish what he wants us to accomplish. First of all, to listen to him. Secondly, to trust him. So... I want us to look at this in the light of the character of Noah. What kind of fellow was he? And the way uh, God said for him to look at his society, here's what he said in the sixth chapter, that God saw the wickedness of man, in verse 5, was great on the earth, and that every intent of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. The Lord was sorry that he made him on the earth. He was grieved in his heart. The Lord said, I will blot out man whom I have created from the face of this land, from man to animals, creeping things, the birds of the sky, for I am sorry that I've made them. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. This was a horrible society that he was in, and God spoke to him, and God looked upon Noah different from all the other people, and what he saw was he saw a man who had a different view. And so the Scripture says he found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Now, look at this. These are the records of the generations of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, blameless in his time. Noah walked with God. Now, think about this seriously. Can it be said of you by your three ways, conversation, your conduct, and your character, that you are a person who walks with God? When somebody thinks about you, some friend or somebody you work with or whatever, in your family, whatever it may be, would you say that that's the way they see you? By your very character, your conduct? Uh, do, do they see you as a person who walks with God? Well, we'll see in just a moment as we begin to look at all these things. And so uh, I want us to look at, uh, to see uh, God's view of Noah. And he said, first of all, found favor in the eyes of the Lord. His record was righteous, blameless in his time, Noah walked with God. Can that be said of us? If that not, cannot be said of us, what can, what can people say? That you're rich? Or that you're famous? That you're busy? You're a good employee? You're a good manager? You're a great neighbor? Uh, you're a good uh, a church person? You attend church, you listen. What, what can they say? What would be more powerful to be said of you than you walked with God? You walked in the, you, you had favor with the Lord. We have favor with the Lord when we listen to him and when we trust him. And that is true in the life of Noah. So I want us to think about it for just a moment. God said to him, Noah, it's only unrighteousness and sinfulness and wicked everywhere. I have found in you a blameless man, so here's what I want you to do. And so God began to speak to him, and he commanded him to build this ark. 
Now, what in the world was an ark? Nobody ever heard of an ark before. They wouldn't have any idea what it was. And so when you think about something 450 feet long uh, and uh, about 50 feet wide and about three stories high, and so the Lord spoke to him, and then the question was, was he going to trust what God said? But you see, he walked with God. And the Scripture said he had favor with the Lord. Now, watch this carefully. You listen and say amen. amen. When you ask God for something and he gives you the first step, it may be a juvenile step. It may be something very, very simple that anybody could do or go, whatever God has said to you. When he gives you the first step and you don't take the first step, you miss it. Now, human nature says what? Well, God, if you'll show me how, Tell me how I'm going to do this, and I'll do it. No, God said, get busy. So he had to get busy doing the first thing God told him to do. So I want to ask you a question. When you have an impression, a deep impression in your own heart about something God wants you to do, do you give him some excuse for not moving ahead and saying, okay, God, whatever you say? Or do you have to have an explanation for everything? I think about many things God has said to me that he didn't explain. If he didn't explain to us, probably would have had a bigger problem. He just says, here's what I want you to do. Trust me. Not only listen to me, but trust me. There are three key words in Noah's life. Listen to me, trust me, and obey me. Those are the three bottom line questions in life. Trust me. Listen to me. Obey me. And so he had to deal with this. He simply said, to Noah, Noah, I've found in you a righteous person, blameless. Here's what I want you to do. And so that's his instructions at the time. So I'm asking you, when you ask God about something, and God gives you whatever you call, whatever you receive, I just say God spoke to my heart and said. That's the way I hear it. When he does, what do you do? The Bible said he walked with God and he had favor with God. So the challenge to him was his faith. Am I going to do what God said do, why he said do it, even though I don't understand any possibility of it? I don't even know what this looks like. So think about this. When he did, he had a head-on collision with his society. Think about it. He was the only righteous person. And here he's beginning to do something that is totally unbelievable. Looks absolutely ridiculous. Only somebody out of his mind would even think about such a thing, not only attempting to do it. Watch this carefully. There will be times when God will tell you to do something that nobody else will probably agree with, or, or even you may not understand it. But that's not a sign for you not to obey God. You do what he says do when he says do it, how he says do it, and what you do. You leave the consequences to him. When you obey him, you can, you can, leave, all the, you can leave all the responsibility to him. So let's think about it for a moment. He had a head-on collision. Think about the public uproar when Noah begins this construction of something it looks like it's going to be huge. And wonder how he thinks he's going to do all this. So he had a head-on collision with his society that didn't understand it and thought it was messy and going to mess up their beautiful terrain and so forth. And secondly, when he says God told him to do it, watch this. Who is this God that's told you to do this which seems impossible? Well, what did that do? That gave know an opportunity to tell them who God is. Now, did they understand that? No. Did they believe it? No. How do I know that? Simple reason, that God wiped them all out. So they want to know, who is this God who's told you to do that? Let me ask you a question. Have you ever told somebody something that God told you, and they said, well, what kind of God was that? God doesn't speak to me that way. Who is this God that told you that? God doesn't talk to me that way. Every once in a while I've said something that God told me to do. That's what somebody would say. Well, God never tells me things like that. Maybe you don't ask him. 
Watch this. God doesn't treat us all the same way. It's, it depends upon his will for your life. And what I want you to say is that our responsibilities before God is not to answer all the questions, but to listen to him and to trust him. Because if you don't trust him, nothing else is going to work in your life. Think about it. You don't have four wheels on the car. It's not going anywhere. You don't have any trust for God. You're not going anywhere in life. So, uh, this God you worship, how are you going to finance this, Noah? You don't look like a rich man. Well, how did he finance it? I don't have any idea how God provided, but one thing I know for sure, watch this. If God tells you to do something, God assumes responsibility for making amends, whatever is necessary for you to be able to do his will, whatever it is. And if you always wait till you have all the answers in life, God will never be able to bless you the way he wants to bless you. He listened to God. Did you get that? Yes. And what else did he do? Come on now. He listened to God, and what else did he do? Trusted him. And that's where a lot of people get hung up. I know, I, here's what I believe God said, but he, he, surely he didn't say that. And that must have been probably what Noah was thinking when God first told him to do this. Because if you think about what, if you think about it, about what he told him to do, and he said, "Here's what I'm going to do," and he says, "Make for yourself an ark of gopher wood," and then he describes everything. He describes it's going to be 450 feet long, 50 feet wide, three stories high. In other words, how? But he listened to him, and having listened to him, he trusted God. Now watch what happens. The reason he had the courage that he had was God had spoken to him, and he trusted the God that he'd been worshiping to fulfill his promise. And so what happens? God said, here are the plans. I'll answer the questions. Watch this. God is just as willing to give you as clear an answer to your request when those requests are sincerely offered to God, cried out to him as he did as he did to Noah. We're just not building arcs. We're doing something else. We are purchasing something or moving somewhere or doing something, and whatever it might be, we have a right to ask God, what do I do next? How many times do you think Noah said, God, <laughs> you mean 450 feet long? He had a right, he had, listen, there's nothing in the Bible that says I, I should never ask any questions. But to doubt the Word of God is something else. But listen, the Bible says Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Why did he find favor? Because he listened to him and because he trusted him. So let's ask yourself the question. Do you listen to him? Do you trust him? then if that's true in your life, then God, listen, God will show you favor in every single area of your life. If in each area of your life you listen to him and you trust him. That's two-thirds of it. We're in the process of trusting him, and what's God going to do? He's going to bless whatever you do. And Noah is such a perfect example, listen to this, of everyday life. Everyday life, what do you do? You listen to him, you trust him, and if you're wise, you obey him. A, B, C, one, two, three. Now, think about this. What do you need to add to that formula for living? I think the Bible is absolutely, I can hardly describe it. In one story, thousands of years ago, through one man, God laid us down the foundation to live every single day of our life. Listen to him, trust him, and obey him. Can you beat that? No. If you can count to one, two, three, or A, B, C, you have God's solution for living life in a wicked, vile, sinful, corrupt, unrighteous world. And we want to make it complicated now. They'd heard of this one true God, and I'm sure he tried to tell them uh, who that was. And um, I can imagine what they must have said to him. God, who is this God? 
Why, why, are you the only, why are you the only one who's heard from him? Why isn't somebody else from him? Because God said they were wicked as the devil, and uh, they paid no attention to God. The world was so corrupt that God said, I'm, I'm going I'm to wipe this whole thing out and start all over again. Now, this is so simple that a five-year-old could get it. Now, watch this. You can take that formula to any single part of your life. What do you teach your children? Listen to you, trust you, and obey you. And so, when you think about how Noah expressed his courage and his trust in God, it was so simple to him. And think about this. There wasn't any such thing. He's one of the first guys in here. There was no such thing. All he had was the voice of God speaking to his mind, his heart, to his spirit, because he was attempting to live a righteous, holy, godly life, probably knowing very little about God, but God had made enough clear to him that he knew to obey the voice that was within him. And he showed him how to do the impossible. And thousands of years later, we find in one man the key to living life. You know, I can just stop right there and praise God the rest of the day. You listen to him, you trust him, and you obey him. And so, when I think about that, I think about when you trust God, sometimes you'll be in situations where, watch this, nobody else understood him. No, nobody understood him. Think about how simple and profound this is, that God said to one man and the only man on the earth and his family, whom God would save from absolute, total destruction of society. One man. I'm, this, this is a reason I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to favor you with life. You listen to me, you trust me, and now you're willing to obey me. One of the most important men in the Bible teaches us in the beginning of the Bible how to live our life the rest of our life. The way you live a godly life, the way you live the Christian life, is you listen to God, and you listen to God by primarily by reading it in His Word. You trust what it says, then you obey what it says. If you think about how awesome God is, that He has all knowledge about all things, He has all power in every single circumstance of life, nothing beyond Him. And what does he do? He boils it all down to three things I want you to do. I want you to listen to me. I want you to trust me, and I want you to obey me. And you know what? I think about this. I think about how many millions and millions of volumes written about the Word of God about so many aspects of the Word of God, and we just put it down in one sentence. That's what everything in this Bible is an explanation of or an illustration of the failure or the willingness to listen, to trust Him, and to obey Him. And we sing it, trust and obey, but there's no other way to be happy in Jesus. But they forgot one thing. Listen Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to listen to him, trust him, and obey him. How could you ever forget this sermon? It has nothing to do with me. It has to do with the simple truth of God's Word. And the next time you read the story of Noah, you'll remember this. You listen to him. You trust him, and you obey him. And so somebody says, well, what happened? What happened was the whole world was destroyed, and Noah and that bunch of animals came out alive. Was Noah a perfect man? No, he wasn't. But he listened to God. He trusted what he said, and he obeyed him. And maybe you've never trusted Jesus as your Savior. 
You don't know what all this is about? This is all about this, that God loves you. He has a plan for your life. If you'll listen to him and you'll follow his leadership and his guidance, that is, if you will trust him with your life, your future, and obey him, you'll find life at its very best. If you fail to do that, you're on your own. God's not going to force you. He gives you a choice, a fantastic choice, an awesome choice. You have to decide. Now, think about it. Only three things. Are you going to listen to him? Will you trust him? And will you obey him? If you want life at its very, very best, no matter who you are, that's the solution right there. Amen? Amen. Father, we love you and praise you and thank you for this simple, childlike study that is so profound. And I pray the Holy Spirit will speak to somebody here who's never been saved because they hadn't been listening. I pray that they've listened today. They're willing to trust you to forgive them no matter what they've done. They're willing to obey you today, trusting you as their Savior and their Lord. We're going to trust you for it now in Jesus' name. Amen. In Touch, leading people worldwide into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ and strengthening the local church. This program is sponsored by In Touch Ministries and is made possible by the grace of God and your faithful prayers and gifts.